Yo, what is going on guys? Horcrux here and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, we will be doing another PvP combat analysis, a series in which I take my personal 1vx clips and I break them down step by step on how I actually pull them off and what my thought processes are. So if you want to get a little bit better at PvP or maybe you just want to roast some of my 1vxs, by all means stick around, it'll be fun. Let's get into it. Welcome back guys, before we hop into the combat analysis, a huge and glorious shout out to my patrons and also my community members, without whom I couldn't be doing this, I really couldn't. So if you want to help the channel, the best way to do so is with a like and sub, but if you want to go a step further, I do have a Patreon as well. It comes with some really cool perks like access to free PvP coaching, hit me up in the Discord, special channels, yada yada, it's pretty cool. Also, if you guys have PvP top 5 clips, please submit them to my Discord, also horcruxeso at yahoo.com. Also, also, I will be doing another series in which you guys send me any PvP clips, and if you want actual critiquing on what you can improve on, I will do so in a breakdown. I can do that personally for you if you're a Patreon subscriber, or if you want me to post it on video, make some content out of it, I can do that as well. Up to you guys. Okay, finally hopping into the combat analysis. So you guys need to know what sets I'm rocking. This is on the Magic of Dragonite and the Deadlands DLC. I'm rocking Iron Blood. Bring Spell Weave, Magna Incarnate, and Ring of the Pell Order. Now, this is a very high critical strike build, so you're going to see a, a lot of uh, pretty juicy uh, crit numbers come up. Uh, if you want access to the build videos, there's a link down in the description. Also, on my channel, it's my Molten Crit DK build and also my Demigod PvP builds, what I'm going to be using for reference. So, uh, these guys are pretty good. Uh, DS GTC is a pretty decent player, so this starts off as a 1v4. So right now, I'm just going super offensive right from the start. I have all my buffs up. Please, guys, on the DK, buff and debuff management is absolutely everything. If any of your buffs start to fall off, uh, you're screwed. So I do heavily suggest you guys having some sort of UI that is easy for you to keep track of your buffs and debuffs. I come from World of Warcraft. I play a lot of that. So I like having my uh, buffs kind of set up like this. So right now, I'm just trying to get DOS on everyone. Uh, nothing too fancy. Uh, this is kind of prep time because the way Iron Blood works. It gives you 30% damage mitigation, uh, which is amazing. Uh, it's going to snare you. Eh, who cares? So right now, I'm just trying to get my debuffs on everyone. I'm holding on to my leap for in case I see someone drop low. So I'm rolling, rolling out the AoEs here, guys. Uh, another thing to note, I, I see a lot of people screw this up. The opacity on your AoEs, turn them all the way down. Do not have them really bright. It's super distracting. Just, just, just turn this down. You see, I have a very opaque AoE. I know to get out of it. That's a good enough visual indicator for me. A signal to me hey i need to get out of this so continuing on with the 1vx again just applying dots on everyone applying flames of oblivion because i'm using it as my spammable so ironically there's three people here flames of oblivion hits three people the benefits of applying flames of oblivion since we're running a charge traits is every single time i apply flames of oblivion it's going to hit someone with a burning status effect. It's about 50% chance on this build I've tested. Also, I have a build uh, a uh, video on that as well. If you guys want to see what the likelihood of applying the burning status effects are, as you guys know, on the Magic of Dragonite, you your sustain is completely taken care of with your combustion passive. So that's the huge part of the DK. You do not need to stack anything into recovery whatsoever, just as long as you can get your burning status effects up. So. Just kind of what I'm doing here, I do have, again, add-ons are very important. I have a Seedling Fury Tracker over here in the left-hand corner, which is indicative to me when I need to go in for my burst. So, right here is a pretty interesting moment. So, I have Iron Blood up, so I'm still safe for like another two seconds, right? Of uh, 30% damage mitigation. Uh, Major Sorcerer is up, so everything is completely proc. So, right here is really fortunate. So, I see Burning Spell Week proc, and I do not hesitate. Again, guys, I'm preaching add-ons. This tells me to go big dick so i have everything proc there's no reason for me to not leap someone it's important to toss leaps off cooldown because if you're battle war passive you do get sustained back from that as well so i'm tossing out a leap i have molten whip already proc so typically i'm going to pick the squishier of the targets i know that the uh sand warden is really tanky i'm not sure what the other class is but i know uh, this other guy is squishy so i'm going to focus him we leap i don't know if this is a 9k leap or what happened to my to my molten whip where's my molten whip go actually oh yeah it hits him for 6k it doesn't crit unfortunate so uh right here is a uh, pretty uh unfortunate for the opponent um he actually does pop his soul tether and his health is decent to where he dies i'm not sure what that is uh thank you eso for the lag 
Um, really benefits me, right? So now it's just a buff and debuff management. Again, I'm roll dodging because I have a lot of well fitted on this build. If you guys go check that out, um, well fitted is, is amazing on the dragon magic of dragon knight. You don't really need to block if you're running a restoration staff. So my buffs are completely falling off. So I need to uh, reapply. I'm imagining that's why I do here. Interrupting the reses. Yes, I apply. Well, it's an armor. Do not forget, guys, this actually applies a pretty decent dot. So I actually apply volatile armor every 10 seconds instead of 20 seconds, which is the entire buff duration, just so I get more sustained dot pressure. So I'm interrupting the rest as I pop wings uh, because I'm stupid. Don't ever do that. Interrupting again. This is the only thing I'm worried about right now. I'm not worried about bursting anyone. I'm, I'm just worried about getting my CCs out and interrupting this res because the last thing I want is him to come back and him hit me with like a 10k in cap or whatever his class was. So I noticed the guy comes in here with some uh, light and heavy attack so I'm going to apply wings. This not only is defensive toward me but it does a lot of offensive pressure as well which I will show you guys here in just a moment. So we're going to go back one just one second here. Oh no I lied. I think that was the actual flames of Oblivion proc. So right here. So we kind of swing the, the camera around a little bit. See if it'll, you can't really see it because of my buffs. But right here is a 4100 uh, tick. What is this from, guys? This is not from Flames of Oblivion. This is from your wings. Just them light attacking you has done 4100 damage to this guy. Okay, so I cannot stress enough how important wings is in 1vx scenarios if you can slot it on your bar. I know with a DK, the, the bars are pretty limited. Again, I roll dodge it closer to interrupt the res. We get hit with a crescent sweep here. I hesitate right here. I should have leaped right here. Guys, look, look, he has no health. Right, he has literally lie attacked himself to death almost. And I hesitate to leap here, which is really unfortunate because I think there's a breath of life. Heals him for like 10k. Well, it kind of doesn't matter because the flames of oblivion hits him at the same time. A lie attack hits him from my wings. I believe right, you know, prior to this, which brings him down really low. I go in for the leap because I see my burning spell we've procced and also my big dick indicator. So we leap, he's dead. So moral of the story right here, guys. Timing is everything on the DK. Absolutely everything. You do not have many moments to where you can just burst someone. So the way your kit works, you don't just burst someone from 100 to full. It, it, it doesn't work like that. You have to play into getting your enemies down around 50%. As soon as you see them around 50 to 60%, it's pretty safe to say that you can leap. And if you get the CC during the leap into a molten whip, nine times out of 10, they're going to be dead. So you don't want to just toss leaps off cooldown unless you need sustain. Uh, with your battle war passive, uh, that's perfectly fine if you just need some sustain. But if you're truly wanting to burst someone, very rarely do you want to throw your leap at when they're 100% unless you know for a fact that you can burst them. They're like a squishy, you know, PvE player or whatever. So try to wait, hold off on your leap, you know, do whatever damage, you know, su sustain pressure that you need to do. You know, Volta Armor, Dot, you know, Kiting, whatever. And the leap is really good because it acts as gap closer and stun and it's AoE. Plus you get a shield, it's, it, it's borderline OP. So right now we do sidestep the Donnie. Uh, this is pretty bad on his part. Uh, movement is pretty good. Uh, just movement's everything also in open world. Since I'm running Iron Blood, uh, my movements are you know, not the best. So you gotta make do with what you have. So right there, um, on a DK, you want to try to position yourself to where everyone's not like facing you. You want to kind of sidestep them. Like when you fossilize, the very first thing you want to do is run around them. And that forces them to swing their camera angle and that's more movements they have to worry about, you know, they're, they're you know, if, if they're old and 30 like me, you know, their they're old man brain can't keep up, you know, with all the movements. So whenever you fossilize, just try to dance around people, forcing them to change their camera angles, you know, kind of out of their comfort zone. So right here is a very telegraph leap. Um, I saw him use deep breath right here, right here. All right, go back a little bit. Uh, when did he actually use it? In hindsight, I remember seeing him use it. Someone use it. There, there's some sort of telegraph here, but um, important thing to note is that you need to watch uh, what animations are going on. Uh, for example, earlier there was a subterranean assault uh, into a Dawnbreaker combo, which I think I completely missed and uh, didn't go over. Uh, we'll see if I can catch it here for you guys without wasting too much time. Uh, yeah, right here. So. Kind of going back to the beginning of this 1vx. 
paying attention to what's going on around you is pretty huge right here i noticed him punch the ground you guys know what that means there, there, there's a subterranean assault coming so i had that in mind so right here it doesn't look like i'm blocking but i swear to god guys i am blocking i timed it out i counted to two i knew when the sa was going to come yeah so uh very uh heads up play on uh horcrux's part there uh, more of the story there is uh, just pay attention to uh, cast animations and uh, what's kind of going on around you. I think I saw a deep breath here. Something telegraphed to me that uh, a leap was coming, so I, I knew to block it there as well. Again, buff debuff management, nothing too fancy. Watching the res. Um, this guy has kind of had it. Uh, I don't care. This is a 1vx, man. I don't care. Like, there, there, there is no honor in open world, okay? I don't care if you guys back off or not. I'm going to focus you. So I focused him because I thought he was AFK. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of scummy like that, but you know, who who cares? Whatever. So, Burning Spell Waves up. I had Molten Whip up. DSSGTC is a half health. You guys know what that means. If I had a leap, it would definitely be coming out. He tried to SA Donnie me. Uh, I, I, I don't know if he missed the Donnie yet again, but we're able to get this kill as well. It's very important to kind of know the boundaries of your class as well. Right? So... Because he went into his Donnie kind of spin to win combo, I, I know his buffs are going to fall off by now. So that's the best time to go offensive is like during their burst because more than likely they have to let something drop off in order to go for their burst. So the best counterplay is bursting during their burst, ironically. It's just a matter of who times out their blocks and you know whatever correctly. Right here, again, this is just fast reaction times. I know to block this leap right here, guys, uh, because your boy Horcrux has played this game for seven years. And I do have a pretty fast uh, reaction time when it comes to uh, classes like this. So this is only about uh, about a half a second. Um, if I took this CC here, I'm, I think I may have died. So again, I'm at 23k. He leaps. Okay, he, he actually leaves me for, for quite a bit. Uh, yeah, I, I go down like 9k there. So um, luckily I blocked. If I didn't block, uh, that would have probably been out of 5,000 for your boy Warcrux. And of course, EP comes in and helps me finish off FRK. So um, hopefully uh, that's pretty enlightening, guys. Got more of the story. Cast animations, please apply to them. Keep up with your movement fossilized. I do not uh, look at this uh, disrespectful teabag as completely unprofessional on my part. Apologies, guys, but uh, sometimes when you're in the moment and you get zerged down all day in Cyrodiil and you see opportunities like that to really flex on the teabaggers, well, uh, there you go. So um, hopefully this is helpful for you guys. Learn a little bit about the DK. I'll try to do other classes as well, but I do main mad DK. So most of the uh, combat analysis clips are going to be that. Guys, don't forget, I really do want to do like a critiquing session, right? Of you guys send me your 1vx clips and I'll critique them. It doesn't matter what class, uh, where you're at, I'll tell you what you're doing right, what I think you're doing wrong. And if you can stand the criticism, by all means, send them. And if you give me permission, I'll upload them as content. So that'd be pretty fun. I would like to make this a weekly thing. Uh, drop them in the Discord. There is a PvP tab for that. Or just send them my email. I'll figure it out later. So uh, let's make it a thing, guys. Weekly thing. I think it'd be really good to get you guys familiar with PvP and just, just teach more about PvP. I don't think there's a lot of content creators doing that. And uh, I would like to be that guy. So with all that being said, guys, thank you for watching today's video. Have a great rest of your day. And I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.